Hi folks, this is just a quick video where I'm going to go through how to set up the new cloud sync agent for your synchronization of identities with Entra. So I've downloaded the installer from the portal and I'm just going to double click it here on my server. Now this is the domain controller I'm installing on. I suggest for production environments you keep this on a separate server. Uh, ideally have two of them as well. So we're going to start our configuration wizard here. And the first choice we're going to have is choosing between HR driven provisioning or on premise application provisioning. Now we want the HR driven provisioning because that includes the Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync or what's going to be called the Entra Connect Cloud Sync in the future. Um, and it will also support um, provisioning from HR systems if you're uh, in a company that has Workday or success factors, or uh, is willing to manually code an API for this. So real cool stuff you can do with that. So you both you get both these features by completing the installation that we're gonna be completing now. So both HR driven provisioning and just regular synchronization of your identities will work after we've done this. I'm going to click next and I'll need to authenticate with my tenant. Now I'm going to use my global admin, but you could use your hybrid uh, admin instead, which is the least privileged role for this. So I'll click next. And since I have passwordless and obviously custom branding, as you can see, it's not an error. I just like it to look weird. So I completed the sign in on my device here. And now we're going to have the option of creating a GMSA account. So that's group managed service account, or use a custom one that we pre created. Now I advise against pre creating a custom one unless you have a very comp complex um, structure in your, your AD or your, you have very uh, siloed departments that handle this. So if you're able to just say create GMSA and the service will take care of everything. So I'm going to enter my credentials here. And we should see that it created the GMSA. No complaints means that it did. Um, and just know that you have to be enterprise admin in order to create that. So I'll go ahead, it's chosen my correct domain. So I'll go ahead and click next. Now if you had more domains, you could add those here as well. Um, just know that this can be installed in disjoint domains. So you could have separate installations in all your different domains. They don't need to have trusts and everything set up. Just install a new agent in every single domain, basically. Preferably multiple agents, so you get high availability. So everything looks fine. It's saying that it's, it's going to create this uh, GMSA. It's called Prov Agent GMSA. I'll confirm that. And this is all live, by the way, and I'm not doing anything speeding up the video or slowing it down. <laughs> um, so you sort of get the idea of how long this takes. It doesn't take too long. You can fast forward if you don't like waiting two minutes, but usually it doesn't take that long. It can take very long if something's wrong, however. And in that case, you need to look into the logs and debug what's going on. And I must say, 
I, I have run into a few snags installing this around different customer sites. It can be sort of confusing, the errors that come along. Um, it's, it's not very informative. I tried updating the documentation with Microsoft on the learn pages. So some of my corrections are in there and uh, they should help out with some of the most common issues. So we're done and yeah, that's it. The agent is installed, it's running. There's not really much more to it on the on-prem side of things. Um, I'll just show you the GMSA, oh, we need to go into advanced features here. So the GMSA will be here in the managed service accounts, which is a, a special uh, group folder that you, you only have your GMSA or MSA accounts within. Um, so don't mess with it. <laughs> Basically this has the, per, the permissions required to do the synchronization. Uh, and it's, it's a very secure way of running a service. So if you don't know what GMSA is, I suggest you look it up. It is awesome, um, but it's also on-prem legacy stuff. And I'm going into the cloud, so see you guys later. All right, we're in the cloud. This feels, this feels better. What we need to do now to get our Connect Cloud Sync running is to set up the actual configuration of what we need synchronized. And the lovely thing about this new synchronization service is that it's controlled via the cloud. So in the Entra portal, we have our hybrid management. And we go to AD Connect. It's not been renamed yet, but I hope some of you folks know that this thing is being renamed to Entra Connect or Entra Cloud Sync. So just bear that in mind if you're Googling or something for this in the future. So we'll go into the Cloud Sync um, configuration area and we'll start a new configuration. Um, but, oh, but first I want to show you the agent. So this is the agent we installed before. And again, if you have hundreds of these, they'll just show up here. You can keep an eye on them. Um, see if they're all, are all right. So just know that. There's a lot more you can look into logs and stuff like that here, but we'll just focus on the configuration for now. So I'll click new configuration. Since we only have one domain here, I'll choose that one and I'll leave the enabled password hash sync option checked. And that will take a little while to create. And just FYI, I enabled the password hash sync, or I kept it enabled because we're not using ADFS anymore in this setup. And I suggest you consider migrating away from ADFS for your um, cloud or Microsoft Cloud connection um, if you're still using ADFS. All right, so. This is our configuration. You'll notice here it says review and enable at the top. That's because we haven't really done anything, so it's not really set up yet. So we'll start with adding a scoping filter. And for that reason, I'll select an organizational unit. So instead of just doing everything, we'll do a distinguished name. So I'll need to jump back into my on-prem here. And I've cheated a little bit and I created a organization unit called my users. And I created a user within that, that has the correct UPN domain available. This is an uh, accepted domain with, within my tenant. I've set it up as a custom domain and obviously that needs to be there. Otherwise the synchronization will default back to the um, tenants default domain name. So in order to synchronize this OU specifically, we need to get the distinguished name. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that by the attribute editor. Go into the distinguish name here and copy that out. And then we'll pull over into the entry portal again and paste that in there. So this, this means that I'll only be using the synchronization engine for that specific OU. And you could put, put multiples in here. Or you could do security groups if you like that. I just find the other way here more efficient. So that's there. Um, and you'll notice it'll it'll just say saving up here and it said great something was successfully saved. It might not say that if you're using PIM and you're uh, running least privilege. It might say an error there, but still save it. I think that's a bug they're working on fixing. Hopefully it's gone by the time you see this video. So the next thing we want to make sure is that we're mapping the correct attributes. Now the default is great in my opinion. Uh, it's a lab, so what more could I ask for? Um, but just know that this is the place where you could go to change some of the attributes. So let's say you wanted the, um, let's say the country or something like that, or preferred language. Yeah, that's a good one. So let's say preferred language was something you always wanted to have set for a specific language. Now right now it's running a, a an expression, but you could set it as a, um, a constant instead. So basically I'll just do um, DK for Denmark and then all the users would have that as a preferred language when synchronized. So obviously I should have better data governance and make sure that that, that attribute is set in my on-premise, but it, maybe it's not, or maybe there's some other reason why data is not correct in your on-prem and you could sort of do a little work around here. So that's just an example. Usually you wouldn't have to mess too much with that. So I'll say save schema. Wait for that to save. Bada bing, bada boom. I can go back to my overview here. Because now I've I've defined my scoping. I'm pretty sure about my attribute mapping. And I can then review and enable. So it'll give me a nice summary of what's going on here. And I can choose to enable the configuration. And now this synchronization will run every 10 minutes. So it's much faster than the classic connect sync agent or not agent, the connect sync service, which you're probably used to. And you can also provision on demand, which is quite nice. So if you enter, enter this distinguished name of a specific user, you could have that person immediately synchronized and you'll get a, a summary of what was uh, going on there. So we could try that just quickly. Let's see if we do Lionel Richie here. Go to the attribute and try and get his distinguished name. And we'll jump back in to the entry portal and paste it in there. There we go. We'll see if it works. Hopefully it does. There we go. Lionel Richie synchronized. Accounts enabled. Get all the different things here that we chose. Um, and notice the preferred language, which was not set on-prem, is now set because of the mapping that I configured. So we can close that and we'll fix and we should see the user as well inside our Active Directory here. There we go, Lionel Richie. And voila, that's it. We're cloud syncing.